Water rushes over smooth stones, sunlight dances on the ripples, and somewhere, beneath a layer of pebbles and sand, lies a treasure forged billions of years ago. A diamond, unpolished, untouched, waiting for the one who knows where to look and how to see what others miss. You don't need a metal pan. You don't need fancy screens or high-tech gadgets. Nature has its own way of revealing diamonds, if you can read her clues. Today, we are going deep into the art of spotting diamonds in streams, with nothing but your eyes, your hands, and your patience. The first secret, diamonds don't look like jewelry. Forget the glittering, perfect gemstones you've seen in a shop window. In their raw form, diamonds often look like dull, greasy pebbles, transparent, off-white, or faintly tinted yellow or brown. Many first-time seekers walk right past them because they expect brilliance. But in the wild, brilliance is muted. Instead, look for an unusual sheen. Diamonds have a distinct waxy or greasy surface luster. When wet, they don't sparkle like quartz. They glow softly, almost as if light sits inside them rather than bouncing off. A diamond's journey begins deep underground in volcanic pipes made of kimberlite or lamproite. Over millions of years, erosion breaks down these rocks, freeing the diamonds and carrying them into rivers and streams. The water acts like a natural conveyor belt, moving heavy minerals, gold, garnets, magnetite, and yes, diamonds downstream. But unlike lighter stones, diamonds are dense. They settle in specific spots where the current slows. And those spots are the key. Walk along a stream after a period of rain, when water has shifted sand and exposed new layers. Study the inside bends of the stream, places where water curves and slows, allowing heavier materials to sink. Pay attention to gravel pockets between larger rocks, behind natural obstructions like logs or boulders, shallow depressions in bedrock where pebbles gather. These are natural catch points. Diamonds can rest here for decades, even centuries untouched. When you find the streaks of black sand in a stream bed, you found a concentration of heavy minerals. While black sand is mostly magnetite or hematite, it's a sign you're in a high-density material zone, exactly where diamonds can also settle. In these zones, sift gently through the top layer with your hands. Let the lighter sand wash away and see what remains in the palm of your hand. Look for any small, translucent, or oddly greasy pebbles. Streams are filled with quartz and other clear minerals that can trick you. But here's the difference. Quartz will sparkle with sharp flashes in sunlight. Diamonds give off a muted, oily glow, even in shadow. Hold the pebble underwater. Diamonds remain visible in a way quartz often doesn't. They refuse to disappear into the water's shimmer. Another quick sign. Diamonds often have rounded edges from tumbling in the stream, but their surface feels slightly rough, almost like fine sandpaper. Without a pan, your greatest tools are your hands and patience. Kneel at a likely spot, scoop up small handfuls of gravel and sand, letting the water wash away lighter particles. You're left with heavier materials, tiny garnets, ironstone, and if you're lucky, a diamond. Work slowly. A single scoop can hide a stone worth more than anything else you'll find all day. Even if you don't see a diamond immediately, certain minerals can tell you you're close. Garnets, often red or pink, commonly travel with diamonds, chromite, dark metallic-looking grains, ilmenite, black with a subtle metallic sheen. If these are in abundance, the source of diamonds might be nearby or upstream. The time of day can be the difference between spotting a diamond and walking past it. Early morning or late afternoon light is softer and lower, which enhances the greasy glow of diamonds. Midday glare can hide them completely. Try walking upstream in the morning with the sun at your back. Let the light strike the gravel at a low angle. You may see that faint, otherworldly shine that no other stone can mimic. Streams change over time. Seasonal floods carve new channels, exposing previously buried gravel beds. Old channels, now dry or reduced to trickles, can be rich hunting grounds. Look for places where the stream once flowed. These old beds can be as valuable as the current one. The diamonds there have been resting for centuries, untouched by anyone who didn't know where to look. Finding diamonds in streams without a pan is less about luck and more about attention. 
Every rock, every handful of gravel is a potential jackpot. The moment you rush, you miss the signs. When your fingers sift through cool water, you're not just searching for a stone. You're touching a piece of the Earth's deepest history. The water narrows, rushing faster, then slows into a deep, calm pool. To most, it's just another bend in the stream. But to the trained eye, this is a natural diamond vault, a place where the current has quietly deposited treasures for centuries. Now we go deeper, into techniques so precise that old prospectors swore by them long before metal pans and machines existed. Every stream has sections where the bedrock is exposed. Over time, water carves tiny cracks, grooves, and potholes into it. These are nature's gold and diamond safes. To search, position yourself in shallow water. Run your fingers along the bedrock, feeling for crevices. Scoop out the gravel inside and wash it gently in your hands. These bedrock traps are especially powerful in older streams that have cut through ancient volcanic rock, possibly sourced from kimberlite pipes upstream. In certain parts of a stream, currents collide at an angle, creating swirling eddies. These swirling zones naturally filter out lighter materials, concentrating dense minerals at the bottom. Stand still and watch the surface for a few minutes. The water itself will reveal where the current slows, spins, and drops its load. That's where you dig, with nothing more than your hands. Midday light can drown the subtle glow of a diamond. But shaded areas, under overhanging trees or alongside steep banks, can act like natural filters. In these zones, even a small diamond becomes more visible. In shadow, look for stones that don't just reflect light, but seem to emit a faint, deep glow. That's the greasy luster unique to diamonds. You find a small, clear pebble. Could it be quartz? or diamond. Without tools, the wet surface test can help. Hold the stone underwater, rotate it slowly. Quartz often loses its visibility and blends into the water's shimmer. Diamonds remain distinctly visible, as if water cannot hide them. If it passes this test, it's worth keeping for further inspection later. In the dry season, water levels drop, exposing gravel bars and deeper parts of the stream bed. These newly uncovered areas may hold diamonds untouched by human hands. In the rainy season, heavy floods bring fresh material downstream, potentially from new erosion points in diamond-bearing terrain. Both seasons have their advantages, so your search should follow nature's rhythm. Sometimes the key to stream diamonds lies above the water. Look for signs of kimberlite boulders or indicator minerals scattered along the banks. A cluster of garnets, chrome diopside, or black ilmenite grains upstream can signal that diamonds may have been washed into the stream below. Every stream you explore is part of a larger ecosystem. Disturb it gently. Move stones back after checking them. Let the water flow as it always has. The less you alter the stream, the more likely it will continue to produce treasures for generations. Before you leave a spot, take one last slow walk along the bank, scanning the shallow edges. Diamonds can appear when you least expect them. After your eyes have adjusted to the patterns of the gravel, that's when anomalies stand out. Sometimes the best find of the day happens when you're already thinking about going home. Finding diamonds in streams without a pan isn't just a skill, it's an art form. It's about slowing down, letting the stream tell its story, and reading every ripple and stone like a page in an ancient book. Each diamond is more than just a gemstone. It's a time capsule from deep within the earth, carried through volcanic eruptions, ancient rivers, and countless seasons until it came to rest at your feet. You don't need a pan. You don't need chemicals. You just need to look and truly see. Because somewhere in a stream not far from here, another diamond waits, hidden in plain sight, until the moment your hands find it. Every stream tells a story, but only those who truly listen will ever hear it. Diamonds are not found by rushing nor by wishing. They reveal themselves to the patient, the observant, and the respectful. Long before pans, machines, or laboratories, humans found these treasures with nothing but their eyes and their hands, guided by instinct and the quiet signs of nature. Somewhere under the shimmer of running water, a stone older than time itself lies waiting. Not to be taken in greed, but discovered in awe. And when you hold it for the first time, you'll know. You've touched the heartbeat of the earth.